Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information, MotoGP and Formula 1 2023. In a bid to promote Pedro Acosta to MotoGP, KTM could be willing to offload Augusto Fernandez, according to a report. For much of the 2023 MotoGP season, Acosta has appeared destined for a move to MotoGP, which has all but been confirmed. However, it remains to be seen where the Spaniard will go as KTM full factory lineup of Jack Miller and Brad Binder is not going anywhere, while Polis Bargaro is also on a two-year deal that expires at the end of 2024. That leaves the second Gasca's seat of Fernandez, who although is on a one-year deal and could easily be moved on to accommodate the young Spaniard, the Austrian manufacturer has been clear about their intentions of keeping Fernandez as well. KTM tried to begin negotiations with Lucio Seconello as part of plan to acquire the two Honda seats and make them KTM bikes for next season, which would have given them the possibility to add Acosta without moving on from Fernandez. But Seconello dismissed the idea and confirmed his team would be remaining alongside Honda, which is why speculation of Fernandez being offloaded to them should they lose Alex Rins has surfaced during a report from Gazetta. Despite denying the possibility of a change of bike supplier, Seconello could still help KTM solve the Acosta problem, because if the orange team fails to create a third team, Pitt, Byra could come to an agreement with Lucio to park Fernandez for 2024 in his team alongside Nakagami, thus closing the road to Morbidelli, thus deploying Acosta on Gas Gas as Polis Bargaro's partner, stated Gazetta. Provided that the latter, who will be back in the race at Silverstone after the terrible accident on Friday in Portugal, doesn't realize that he is no longer able to compete at the top level with a MotoGP bike and decides to stop, which would solve every problem. On the other hand, Franco Morbidelli will lose his Yamaha seat next season but has given a deadline to decide about a new role. The major 2024 rider shakeup, which has long been anticipated is now expected to be confirmed, with Alex Rins in the process of succeeding Morbidelli. Yamaha have offered Morbidelli a seat on an official RM1 in World SBK next season, Gazetta report. But Morbidelli wants to continue riding in MotoGP and has so far declined the offer, the report states. He has just a few more days to deliver his final answer about whether to accept the lifeline offered by Yamaha. By the Silverstone weekend he will still have to give an answer, it is reported. MotoGP returns next weekend, on August 6, at Silverstone. Morbidelli's obvious plan B to remain in MotoGP next season has always been a switch to the Mooney VR46 team, a place he knows well after graduating from the VR46 Academy. But that option has now closed after Marco Bezzecchi chose to stay alongside Luca Marini for 2024. There are now just two vacancies which Morbidelli could swoop for. Grazzini Racing will likely have a spare seat when they dispense with Fabio Di Genantonio. However, Moto2 star Tony Arbolino, backed by veteran manager Carlo Pernat, is also a candidate for Grazzini. LCR Honda will have a vacancy when Rins moves to Yamaha, giving Morbidelli a chance at a straight swap. On the other hand, the way Marc Marquez communicates to show himself has changed radically since he ended his relationship with Emilio Alzamora. With his new manager, Jimmy Martinez, he has left behind the excess of zeal when it comes to telling of himself, being now very transparent. We see him every day on his social networks, as well as in the documentary All In That premiered for this season, telling his hard year 2022 fighting his terrible humorous injury. Another way to get to know him more is through his new book, Being Marc Marquez, How I Win My Careers. Written by Austrian author Werner Jessner, the eight-time world champion, it opens a new window into his inner world. In its pages we discover what drives him, what worries him. He also talks about his motivation and values, his triumphs and his defeats. He reflects on his serious injuries and how little it took for them to lead him to retire, and why he keeps going despite them. These are some of the most powerful passages that Mark Marquez tells us. If I see a wall, I go through it. It's as simple as that. No matter how many times it takes or how hard I hit my head, I won't stop until I go through the wall. This has always been my focus and will never change. 
Mark talks about the determination he has to overcome the many difficulties he has encountered in recent seasons. On a physical level, but also technical, with a Honda that is far from the European brands. He is now much more aware of what is at stake in the event of an accident. I know very well that the next serious accident could not only end my sporting career, but also affect me for the rest of my life. Mark Marquez has not finished a single long race this season, between falls and injuries he still does not score a single point on Sundays. His best performance usually comes when he rides at the limit and many mistakes have cost him when he has let his guard down, I need the maximum amount of adrenaline in the shortest time. And I need to be on the edge. Things have been easy for Mark since he arrived in MotoGP in 2013, until his accident at Harris 2020, where the bad run of injuries began. Now perhaps he puts more value on what he achieved then. My life was like a rocket. I just took off, flew, faster and faster, even higher, towards the light. It was a wonderful trip, but I thought it was normal. Oddly enough, when you're really fast, riding doesn't feel like a lot of effort. The smooth ride is a wonderful feeling. The last time I did it was in Jerez in 2020. Another factor is the technological evolution of MotoGP in recent seasons, with the increasing importance of aerodynamics, the more the bike drifts, the more inefficient the aerodynamics. I tilt the bike much more than almost any other rider on the grid, 60 degrees is normal for me. With some aerodynamic settings I couldn't ride more than 56 degrees. I just couldn't force the bike down. Motorcycles lose contact pressure in the slipstream current, so the rider's bike behind brakes worse than the rider in front. In the acceleration phase, you used to do fewer wheelies than the guy you're chasing. With aerodynamics? Exactly the opposite. The wings are worse at keeping the front end down while in the slipstream and the pilot can't step on the accelerator as quickly. None of this is good for action. Mark admits that he does not like the direction that MotoGP is taking in the technological section, a path that Ducati is opening with Gigi Dalignet at the head, but if he wants to triumph again he must accept and adapt to the changes. As Valentino Rossi did in the past, we saw him with 500 cubic centimeters machines and then MotoGP in his last era with totally different styles, I have to adapt to the idiosyncrasies, although I am not a fan. I was trying to talk from my head a lot and Mark also talks about the difference between European builders, more agile than the Japanese, so necessary in this changing world, the European approach is problem, solution. The Japanese approach is a bit longer, problem, analysis, discussion, solution. Honda has to provide me with a bike that makes it possible to win. The shine of the iconic Repsol Honda team has dimmed for me in recent years, but it's still there.